to speak for, for that alone. Uh, but first of all, I'd like to thank you for coming down to me. Like the late invite that it was, David Martin. But uh, it's great to see. I mean, I've been involved in the game for a very long time. I've worked at the RFL and then I've been in, in the coal face at Clubland. But it's always marvellous to see so many people in the room that care about what we believe. And it's especially marvellous to see. And that's one of the reasons I, I was keen to get down here, even though it's short notice, to see it in a, in a development area such as the Midlands. So, well done. And please, please remain involved in the game and remain working in the game. It is a special game, is this Rugby League, and it is a great family within Rugby League. And one thing about Rugby League, right the way from 1895, when there was the Northern Union that broke away from the Rugby Football Union, then the rules were amended, is it? They've never ever been afraid of change. If they think, that if, if the uh, governing body thought that the game could be made better, they were happy and they were courageous enough to embrace that change. And that's right the way from 1895 to very, very recently when the game went from winter at, at professional level to, to, uh, to summer. And even now, there's change coming ahead at the very elite of the game and there's change that's very necessary and is coming at the, the grassroots of the game, the community level of the game. So please, don't be frightened of change and don't be frightened to get out of your comfort zone. You know, we, we can all get into a routine and feel nice and comfortable in our little environment and so on and so forth. Don't be frightened of getting out of it. Because it's when you, you if your comfort zone is that big, you go out of it and in a few weeks your comfort zone is even better and you become better people in your, your club becomes a better club as well. And, and I, I tried as I was listening to the two little, little chats earlier on, I tried to cast my back, mind back a long, long time to why I got involved in rugby league. Uh, I didn't really have much choice really with living in Castleton, right opposite to the Weldon Road ground, where you used to nip, on, nip in and see train on a Tuesday, on a Thursday night, and Friday night before they played on, 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 the, on the Sunday. But why I really got involved in rugby league was just because it, it was fun. And it's been a word that's, that's kept coming through all the time. I loved getting on the ball and trying to run through and beat other people. And I loved as well when they got the ball, advancing and tack all the little basic skills. I love catching, I love, I love throwing, I love running with the ball, and I love tackling. And as and the game develops, it develops, obviously, you get into the kicking and, and the fighting aspect as well. And I also got involved for fun, but I got involved because I wanted to get better. It was my little dream when I was a little kid, it was to, to play for Cass. I had to be living where I lived. And thankfully, and, and, and a lot of people helped me that, I managed to achieve that. <coughs> but, and, and as well, and I noticed about the, you know, the competition aspect, and I think it's bang on. We need to get participation, we need to get involvement. But also you've got to realise as well, competition comes as well. You're not telling me, if you put a kid of 13, with his mates, playing against another kid of 13 with his mates, there's going to be a natural competition anyway. You want to win. So it doesn't necessarily have to be within your structure and reported back. Because you, when you're involved in sport, you're a competitive person. And I think those are the three reasons that I got, I, I got involved for fun, to get better, and that competition within the team element. And you, and, the, and you can provide for your players with this structure, all of those. And I also think, as an administrator or as a coach as well, that your job is pretty simple. I mean, I, I, my philosophy on coaching is it's a KISS philosophy, keep it simple. And I think it's a, it, that should be a philosophy right across the game. And as a coach or administrator at the community level, you're, it's pretty simple what you're trying to do. You're trying to provide the best environment for your players to improve and for your players to enjoy. And that just comes with structured practice, structured games, and a bit of positive feedback at the end of it. So let's not try and complicate things, let's keep things simple, so let's remember why we're involved. And just finally, having said all that, you need to look as well, it, 
I mean, you're talking now about under 12s, under 14s, under 16s, how do we get them best to develop? Well, there's been question marks, obviously, at international, <coughs> international, yes. We've got to admit that. The Aussies beat us regularly, the New Zealanders now are getting to beat us regularly. We need to improve at that level. So what even is, ha is happening at Super League level, there's obviously the first grade that play in the well-publicised and high-profile Super League competition, but underneath that, <coughs> And a lot of our players are in there. There's an under 20 competition, a reserve grade competition, and there's going to be a gap in the middle of the season. And what they're going to do in that middle of the season is play nine tournaments. And the theory behind that is the very fact that players are going to have to be better at the very basic core skills of rugby league. And that's even going on with full time professionals or in the 20s competition. So I would suggest if that's the way the, the governing body are looking to develop, even at the elite to end, I would suggest that these guys have got it pretty right in trying to do something similar, similar at, the, at the very uh, bottom end. And I do hope that you, you buy into it. I do hope that you, you question all of us if you want about our beliefs and so on and so forth. And I do hope that you try and implement it. Because I'll tell you, it's obvious that you, you care about the game, which is great to see, and it's obvious that we can spread the game if you put these things into practice. So please have a go and enjoy whilst you're doing it. Yeah, you've got a reputation of, of, of bringing underdog teams and making them win cups and, and getting to playoffs, etc. So I was wondering what you put that down to. Uh, I put it down basically to, to the, the group dynamics and the players to tell each other. What we try to do, or what I try to do, is, and again, I go back to why I was involved. I think the unity, the mateship, the teamship is, is, is massive in rugby league, and that's why a lot of us get involved in it. And I always believe that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And if you can get 7, 9, 13, 70, how many players that are in that group, if you can get that group really buying into to, to, to caring for that group, and then you play another team, or might have better individuals, but they're not functioning as a group, then they will achieve more. And, and that's something we try, to, we try to create a performance environment that develops that, and we enforce consistent standards, and, and, and we try to develop good norms within the group, so we're, we're all buy into the fact group is greater than individuals. And, and that's something you can still do, whether it's 7, 9 side or 13 side. So we've fallen short internationally, John, now uh, to Australia and New Zealand. At what point do you think is the paradigm shift that we are not good enough? Are we good enough at the youth level, or do we need to fundamentally change the way we do things in the grassroots? I, I think. I think. I mean, and this is uh, when I go to England and we got to the semi-final. You know, they would say, "Oh, the players, this, the coaches, this, some and stuff." But what? What Steve McNamara is. And what Jamie Peacock is, and what the international, their representatives of us, basically. And they show how good we are from the grassroots right the way through to the elite. And there's no doubt in my mind that the minute we are behind the, the Australians, and they've got, I think they call it mini mod rugby, don't it, over there, which is very, very similar to, to what's trying to be introduced here. And you'll see Australian players, great, great skills. Great, great decision making, very, very competitive, all the things that can be developed through this. And I think it's got to start at that age. And, and that's why I say the national team is out, it's a reflection of us. And, and that's why we need to put structures in hand from, from seven right the way through to Super League so that we can continue to develop and, and improve players as they progress along that path. If you were to stand up in Wakefield and give the same presentation about 11 to 13 to 14, what sort of reaction do you get from the parents who have used to 13 side games and not to side games? Yeah, I, I think obviously with, with things like there's the champion schools, etc., which is in there, but what, you, what you've what you got to realise is there's, there's lots of sevens and nines played at, at school level as well. So it's, it's not an, an alien thing, but the perhaps from temporary structure is this, but also what you have to realise as well, players have got to be educated, and there's a lot of education without the players really knowing it, 
in that M62 corridor. And there's, there's also so many players as well that you, you're not looking that this. There's teams in the Castleford Wakefield Fenner State, there's teams of plenty. So there the really isn't the, the, the problems with, well, perhaps we're going to turn up with 11 this week, so what would we have to do? We have to amend our environment so that we can play. They, they, they'd be able to do that. So whether they would accept it or embrace it, I don't know, honestly. But what I'm saying to you is that in your, your context, I believe that this is, this is the right way. It's one that should be embraced and built upon. And, and, and I, I certainly believe that there's some talent within the Midlands area. And, and let's hope that that talent can be nurtured and grown and developed through small sided games. So you get lots of touches, lots of tackles. Because that, that's what it's all about. The more times you touch a ball and the more times you have to make a decision, the, the, you will eventually get, get your skill level will develop in a structured environment and you'll make more correct decisions. And the more tackles you make, the better tackle you have to make. And, and, and that, that's, that's really simplistic terms, but I'm certain that it does apply. What would your view be on progression of the Rugby League for the Midlands, John? If you could say one thing that could really improve this area or that, that could be done, what, what, what in your view would it be? A Super League club here or a yes. seniors? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, because that, that gives. That gives the base of the, of the pyramid, the, the apex to aim for, and that would obviously be, be a super league club. And, and it, re it really is, I mean, for me, it, you, you've got Sheffield, and, and then there's a, there's a big, big, big gap to, down to Harlequin as well. You're not telling me that there ain't enough interest, there ain't enough ability, there ain't enough finance available from Sheffield to London to certainly grow a super league club in, in that. And, and I, I, I think that the next step for me would be to get a Midlands club in the championship and grow it through the championship. But, but you know, it, kids do, like I said, I got involved because I, I like, I, I want to have fun, but I also want to play for cast. Well, I would suggest that in the Midlands, you, you'd want to get involved for fun, but it'd be nice if there was a, a Nottingham team to play for, or a Leicester team to play for, or a Northampton team to play for competing at a semi-professional or professional level. John, you as a coach, is it nice to see that young lad at Harlequin come through? Marvellous. Yeah. Marvellous. It's nice to see it come it's, through. And, and that, that's, 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 I think that's been one of the massive success stories of, of this season in Silverwood. That it, it hasn't come through an accepted route. It shows, and it shows that there is life outside the M62. Why is why they going for Australian coaches when they know there's young lads like that can come? Well, and that's, again, you have to task the chairman and the chief executives about that. But there is definite talent out there. And he's shown that. I mean, it's, it's not, he's it's, it's been involved massively in the community game. He's worked on the development side of Harlequins and he's coached at a university side. That's what that's right, yeah, Rob. And, and he's come through great and, and he's, he's made a great fist of. He's at the start of his career. I, I'm sure he's going to have 20, 25 years coach at the very, very top level. And obviously, he'll gain experience and get better from that. But it just shows that there are intelligent, young British coaches who can innovate and, and make teams better with, within this country. And, and I think it, it is one of the great little things about the Super League story of this year. And I hope he keeps it up. Except when he plays well. <laughs>